Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, let's focus on, again, another lesser known trick. Well, lesser known, uh, I assume. And this is relevant for those of you who work with a lot of image-based data that comes with Coco style JSON annotations. Let's say you downloaded a humongous data set, I don't know, from Kaggle or from a, one of these open source resources that actually comes with a bunch of annotations. And it's got thousands and thousands of images, awesome. Now you have everything you need to train robust models. But the problem is when you're trying to put together your code, you may need a smaller data set to work with. Or maybe your interest, region of interest, is is uh, relevant to part of that data set, but where you need to ignore everything else. So what, what, what would you do, right? I mean, the best thing to do is actually extract the subset of the data and create your own Co Coco JSON data uh, uh, file, basically, for your annotations. That's exactly what this tutorial is all about. And if you relate to this, continue watching. If not, do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not a follower because the next, or a subscriber, I should say, if you're, uh, the next video may be relatable to you. And while you are there at the subscribe button, try to find the little thanks button if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, getting back to the topic, let's go ahead and jump in and start looking at the code. And hopefully this is not gonna be one of those long videos like I normally do. And uh, try to keep it uh, under 10 minutes if possible. And jump, before jumping into the code, let's have a quick look at the co at the data set itself. Uh, there's a lot going on here because I'm gonna make another video on this topic. In fact, I made a video in the uh, past, I believe on this data set in terms of how to download it, but that's not the point of this tutorial. The whole thing is I downloaded this and I got uh, uh, two main uh, folders. Let's just fo focus on this one, live cell train. And it's got 3,729 images and they all start with some name in this case, right? I'm an A172. These are all cell images. It can be any image. It doesn't matter. And if I open one of these, you can see exactly how this looks like, right? I mean, we have a whole bunch of these cell images. Sometimes the cells can be very complicated, but let's just focus on these. And they have different types of names. For example, if I just relate to this SH S, Y, Phi, Y, and only these type of cells. And I want to train a model that, uh, or object detection model that works on these type of images, then it makes sense for us to extract only these ones, right? And then uh, also save the JSON file accordingly. So you're not working with 3000 uh, or, or 10,000 or how many ever, but only a handful of these. So that is the goal. So let's go ahead and first, uh, each of these, I mean, this this directory actually has a couple of uh, JSON files. It's hard to find, but they are located in the same directory, which I hate usually, but I take what I get here. Uh, it's a free data set. So there are two JSON files. One is uh, for validation, one is for training. And all the data resides in uh, this directory itself. So I will just work with uh, validation for now. And each of these JSON files, again, this is worth talking about. I try not to make this a long video, but I don't want to miss certain topics. So if you look at the JSON files itself, the train JSON file is half a gigabyte, 525 meg. That's humongous. You cannot just open and go through this JSON. Same with validation, it's 92 megabytes. It's not humongously large, but still for JSON files, this is pretty large. Why is this large? Because if you look at these images, they have, uh, each image actually has, in this case, not as many, but some images can have thousands of objects and just add up uh, 3,729 images and then thousands of objects, then that is humongous data set, right? So this is why we don't want to work with this entire data set, especially when I'm trying to put together a uh, my code uh, where I want fast results. So let's just extract SHS Phi Y. So first thing first, we need to understand exactly how the JSON file looks like. And uh, it's, I'm pretty sure most of you know, you, you just go ahead and import your JSON file and go ahead and print the contents of this JSON file. I'll share this file with you, so don't worry about it. So let's go ahead and run this. And again, I am opening the val.json, and it takes a while because it's a large file. Uh, but there you go. This is exactly the structure. 
of the JSON file. In fact, if you don't have this code, if you don't know this, this is a valuable resource to have just in case if you want to open JSON files and get a quick view of what is in the JSON file. Well, here you have images and within images you have basically it's a list of 570 containing ID width. That basically tells me that's how many objects there are and it's uh, it's got uh, an id width height file name file name is the image file name and the file location basically original file name url uh, where it got downloaded from and more importantly we need annotations right so what type of annotations do we have we have uh, area we have bounding box we have segmentation this is of course very important for us because these are the polygons i don't just want the bounding box for my uh, mask or cnn type of application and again it has categories in our case we only have one category because we only have cells in this example you may have multiple categories depending on your data set okay now that we understand how the data looks like let's go ahead and put together code for uh, extracting images the subset of images and then extracting relevant information from this humongous data uh, and uh, the you know data set and then uh, and then uh, reusing it or taking a subset of this and creating our own JSON file so I'll share again all the code but uh, I'm giving you the annotations path and where the images are located and where do we want to save it let's save it under uh, a directory called SHS because these are the images we are extracting anyway these ones so let's save them under this images I've already done the exercise because I'm training my own model on my, uh, on this one but let's create a new one called val2 so we can actually see how the output looks like so it's going to be uh, popping up right here and uh, if the doesn't directory doesn't exist go ahead and create the directory and we start with uh, blank test file names and by the way instead of referring to images in my original directory like right here i want to copy all those images into the new directory called val2 and then place them right here so my json file and the images all are located at one place so that's the goal so step one copy all the images right so how do we copy we actually uh, take the file locations and source the uh, directory, destination directory, and just copy, right? Sahutil.copy file, it just copies. Very simple. Where do you get your file names and source directory? We get that from our JSON file, right? So under images, you have file name, and this is our file name. So very simple. So now that's exactly what we are doing right here. Uh, first of all, let's start by opening the JSON file. We need to open the JSON file. So once the JSON file is loaded, we have access to the information. What information? So I opened the JSON file into a variable called test annotations. And within test annotations, I'm looking for images, right? So that that's exactly why I want to study how the JSON file looks like. What did they call these? Usually it's the same names, but it makes sense for you to study it first. So here, look at images. And from images, go ahead and uh, get the file name, right? So we are capturing that as image info. And from image info, look for the file name. Look for the file name and go ahead and get the file and go ahead and append the file name. So at the end of this, you have a list of all the file names. And now you just need to copy them You by calling this function of copy images right there. So you can copy images right here, of course you have your file names and destination directory, all that, great. So you copied the images. Now we need to copy the annotations corresponding to those images and that's the next part here. So your filtered annotations is nothing but what do we need to copy? We need to copy everything from images, annotations, and uh, categories. In fact, I should say you should also include info and licenses in general uh, copy the overall thing because it makes sense for you to have everything at one place but in my case i just copied the top three relevant ones images annotations and categories that's exactly what we are doing here and down here we are going through each of these uh, for example each of these uh, file names and we are filtering the annotations by looking at the file name if that file name for for that specific file name go ahead and get the images annotations and so on and uh, combine them and once it's done we are going to dump all of these into a json file that is going to be residing along with our images so that's the whole thing so let's uh, go ahead and run it because first thing it takes a lot of time initially to load my 92 megabytes of uh, a json file well 
I say a lot of time, but it did take some time. And at the end of it, it takes some time to extract all the annotations. This is where bulk of the time actually uh, takes, and then it writes the JSON file. So our JSON file should be smaller than 92 megabytes, but not a lot smaller, but it should be smaller. So it has written that, so let's go back and check. There is our newly created directory with our subset of images. Now I only have 80 images uh, as subset, and this is the JSON file, it's 57 megabytes, and uh, we will verify, we'll verify how they look like. I mean, these images look like, uh, so, sorry, uh, how the annotations look like uh, by loading this JSON file, because otherwise <laughs> you don't know if you copied everything the right way or not. That is exactly the next step. Visualize Cocoa labels and uh, display images. I've, I've used this code in a few of my other videos, but basically I'm reading the Cocoa labels, uh, these, uh, these labels from JSON and then placing them onto my input uh, images. That's what this entire code is about. And where do we get? I pre-written the path by anticipating what it need it will be so within my shs5 images val2 that's a directory filtered underscore uh no this is called test underscore annotations i didn't change this to val you should if this is a validation data set test annotations we load that and get all image files and then we are randomly picking it for images and then and then uh, displaying on the screen uh okay so let's run this it takes a little while to load the JSON again. When I say a little while, a few seconds, uh, but you get the answer right here. So let us go ahead and zoom in. And that looks good to me, right? So this is a sanity check. Is everything working fine? So all of these cells, if you want, you can print both the original image and the side by side and do all kinds. But I think to me, this, this is logical. You see how everything is making sense, by the way, uh, writing uh, or training a model to do a good job segmenting these objects can be a bit of a challenge, especially what I did not like about this data set is when you look at bottom left right here, you see how some of these cells are not annotated. Only some of them are annotated. So when I train a model, I'm not sure if these cells will be properly segmented because it's probably taking this as background. Uh, again, I don't want to get into that yet. Wait for that video again. That's why you need to be subscribing. But let's print a few more images and then uh, and then end this video. Uh, again, this is a sanity check. So everything looks good, right? So cells right here. Okay, so I am super happy with this. Uh, hopefully the message is conveyed here. You have a large data set with a, uh, with a single JSON file. You're looking for a subset of uh, images and uh, basically you're extracting that from your JSON file and writing your own JSON. So this data set is now ready to be trained. Wait for my future video on this specific topic. Look for something like, hey, how to use Detectron 2 for cell segmentation, something along that lines. Thank you very much for sticking all the way to the end and let's meet again in the next video.